This video will cover some of the craziest injuries footballers have sustained before making a generational comeback. Speaking of a comeback, we might as well begin with the most scary midfielder of the early 2000s, Roy Keane. He was the heartbeat of Manchester United's midfield for well over a decade. However, his career almost ended in the 1997-98 season when Manchester United would play against Leeds in the ninth game of the season. United were one point behind first in the table. The Red Devils needed to win this match and they were neck and neck with Leeds throughout the entire game. All the while, Alfie Holland was winding up Roy Keane the entire match. Knowing Roy Keane, he was not having any of it, and to fight for the badge, Roy Keane went into a hard challenge with Leeds' Alfie Holland in an effort to injure him. But the reverse happened with Keane tearing his cruciate ligament, or his ACL. Holland then made some comments to Keane while on the ground. He was lying on the ground and I just told him to get up, as you normally do with players. Nothing more than that. I wasn't trying to intend anything against him, but obviously he took that very hard. This injury left Keane out for the rest of the 1997-98 season, and he would eventually make his return for the 98-99 season, and he got into a swift run of form. The 98-99 campaign was one of his best yet, and he really started to take out as a quality player and leader in this Man United team. Roy Keane, never been a player like him, best player in the world, never be another winner like him. This was the same year he captained the Red Devils to a Premier League title, FA Cup title, and a Champions League title. His return to football was nothing short of exceptional. If I could bring one player back, it would be Roy Keane. The next three years would be the golden era for Manchester United as they went on to win the Prem three years in a row, and created one of the longest reigning football empires the Premier League has ever seen. He was truly one of a kind, and the same can be said about Petr Cech. Most most football fans associate the rugby style headgear when Petr Cech is mentioned. However, the legendary goalkeeper did not start wearing it as a fashion statement, but rather as the only thing that allowed him to keep playing football. In October of 2006, Chelsea would face up against Reading away from home. At this point in his career, the 24-year-old goalkeeper was one of the best in England, and the foundation of Chelsea's defence. In the first minute of the match, the ball came rolling into the penalty area, and as Cech rushed out to claim the ball, one of the Reading midfielders, Stephen Hunt, was chasing down to win the ball, but instead he would end up colliding into the Chelsea goalkeeper, his knee hitting him in the head and the leaving Petr Cech unconscious. After he was rushed off the field and admitted into the hospital, Cech was left with a fractured skull in the end. Stefan Hunt had his thoughts on the matter, admitting that he had been a little giddy, as it was his first game he had ever started in the Premier League. When Petr Cech was able to return on the 20th of October 2006, wearing the famous rugby helmet, he had a bit of a stinker, conceding two goals against Liverpool. However, Cech would go on to not concede a single goal for the next eight matches in the Prem and furthermore, only five for the rest of the season. In the same year, he also won the FA Cup and League Cup. It was then, and the many seasons in the future, that his performances started to pick up, and in the coming years, Petr Cech won a multitude of awards, including back-to-back -back Golden Gloves, and cemented his name as one of the most iconic Premier League goalkeepers of all time. On the topic of icons, Xavi made one of the best injury comebacks in football history. Most people know Xavi as one of the greatest midfielders of all time, and while he was creating that title for himself, he was faced with a major setback in the 2005-2006 season, on his way to win the Player of the Year that season in La Liga. However, around the end of November, he tore all the ligaments in his knee, including his ACL in a training session. Not only was this a huge blow for Barcelona, but Xavi's future was at stake. When his teammate Samuel Eto'o said, Xavi's ability to dictate the pace of the game and make those around him better is phenomenal. He's a true football genius. Shows just how much of a hit this was for the Catalan club. It wasn't until four months later that he would make a long away to return to football, playing against Cadiz ZF and he would make a few substitute appearances for the rest of the campaign. It was in the next two to three years that Xavi really had his breakout, being the main part of Barcelona's famous treble winning season, including lifting the Champions League, Copa del Rey, and the Liga trophies. His contribution went beyond club football when he helped Spain win the 2008 Euros and the 2010 World Cup, demonstrating that he is one of the most timeless players in football history. The same could be said about the next one on this list, Alan Shearer. The Premier League's top scorer with 260 goals during his career in the English First Division, Alan Shearer has had his highs, but he has also had his lows. In 1992, Alan Shearer had just made an English record transfer to Blackburn Rovers after impressing at Southampton as one of the most impeccable youngsters England has ever seen. In his debut season for the Rovers, Alan Shearer had scored 16 goals halfway into the season and was on track to take home the gold boot. However, in a match against Leeds United, his career almost ended. Completely snapping his right ACL, he had to sit out for the rest of the 92-93 campaign. Alan Shearer himself said that, It was a tough time, not just physically but mentally. To have such a serious injury early in my career was devastating. It wasn't until the 93-94 season that he returned to fitness. And when he came back, Alan Shearer took no prisoners. 31 goals in 40 games in his first season back, earning his team the runners-up spot in the Premier League and also cementing himself as the main number 9 in the England team. He was in fact so good they took home the FWA Football of the Year award, and in the very next season he led Blackburn to a Premier League title, and finishing third in the 1995 Ballon d'Or. 
Looking back on his football career, he is underappreciated to this day, but perhaps not as much as Robert Perez. It speaks to just how good Robert Perez was in the 2001-2002 Premier League season that he overshadowed the likes of Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, and Patrick Vieira in Arsenal's all-conquering side. He was up there in leading the Prem in goal contributions and was close to breaking several records that season. However, his world would come crashing down when he started a quarterfinal replay in the FA Cup against Newcastle. In the opening half hour, he'd already scored and assisted. Subsequently though, he tore his ACL and properly ended his season. One of the greatest ever players in passing, dribbling, and shooting in acceleration. Robert Perez, the Prince of Arsenal. Perez missing from the Arsenal team was a huge problem and he wouldn't return until 10 weeks into the next season. But when he came back, he let others know. Robert Perez went on to record his highest yet goal tally in the 2002-2003 season and continued on the uptrend for the next two years. On that journey, he was included in the PFA Team of the Year award for three straight years, won the Prem in 02 and 04, the FA Cup in 03 and 05, and was a big part in Arsenal's 05-06 UCL campaign where they lost in the final. Perez is often forgot about in today's generation, but he paved the way when it came to playing as an inverted winger. He showed that players aren't limited to their position, much like Aaron Robin did. Robin really made his name once he had his debut season for Bayern in the 09-010 season. Finishing the campaign with 23 goals in 37 games, he was on track to become a club legend, although he would find some adversity in the 2010-11 season. Before he could play any matches, medical tests confirmed that from a previous hamstring injury sustained while playing with the national team, he hadn't healed all the way and he would stay out for the next two months. It was in January that he returned, but it would take a while for him to get back into the form he was previously in just one year ago. Bayern chairman Carl Heinz room with something stated that, of course Bayern Munich are very angry. Once again, we must pay the bill as a club after a player is seriously injured from playing with the national team. Robin went on to only play 17 matches for Bayern Munich that season, scoring 13 goals. Even though he would face many more injuries throughout his career, the next 3-4 years was his prime. He went on to score 20 plus goals in the next season, and many years into the future won the Champions League, UEFA Super Cup, DFB Pokal 4 times, and the Bundesliga 7 times in one of the most powerful Bayern sides the world football has ever seen, and probably ever will.